Yo, what is up guys? Anthony here back with another Destiny Child video here on the channel. And in today's video, everyone, we are going to be doing an ignition guide. Now I've had a few requests here on the channel recently for an ignition guide. So I figured why not gather up some information and give it to you all here on the channel. But before we do dive into the ignition guide here, I did want to, of course, plug the discord if you guys would like to join the discord here for my YouTube community server. I do have a link in the description box below as always. So if you guys do need any help with your destiny child teams, etc., ignition, any further questions outside of this video that I may have not answered, feel free to join in on the discord as well. If you guys would like more information on ignition units to prioritize, etc. We also do have tons of chats here. So if you guys are interested in joining in on the fun, we do have the discord linked in the description as always. So to dive into the video now, I did put together a Google Doc here of some information gathered from the Destiny Child International Discord server. And of course, I also linked some guides here from the Destiny Child Global Database, as well as Oxytocin's World Boss Lab and a unit tier list here, which can be very helpful. We also do have the Destiny Child International Discord linked here as well. So credits to the Destiny Child International Discord and of course the creators of the database and of course to Oxytocin for the World Boss Lab that he did share in the DCI Discord. So. All of this information can be found from the DCI Discord server. I just wanted to gather it up and put it on a doc here. So it's a little bit easier to explain if you guys don't have Discord or something. So we can get started here with the first page, which stats can an ignition core increase? We do have HP here. The more the better, you die when your HP is at zero, of course. We do have agility or AGL. Only affects skill damage, hit slash evasion rates, and minorly affects slide skill damage range and drive damage. Does not affect debuff hit slash evasion or skill gauge speed. Next up here, we do have crits. Only affects crit chance 2.5% per 1000 and minorly affects drive damage. Does not affect crit damage. Defense here, take less damage from skills with the diminishing returns. Damage over time, bonus damage, and fixed damage bypass defense with the defense ignore damage scaling higher based on higher defense next up here we do have amp material and core priority so this is basically ignition core material to prioritize for example from the world boss trial shop if we do get handed out a core selection box etc you will want to prioritize the amp attack core over the amp defense core the amp defense core over the amp agl core and the AMP AGL core as well as the crits core are similar, so they would be last prioritized. First up here, we do have AMP attack is the most significant stat for increasing damage across all game modes. Although you can't get any additional AMP attack substats on an AMP attack core, you get a guaranteed 400 AMP attack, making it the best value overall. Other types of cores can high roll into two AMP attack substats for a total of 600 AMP attack, but the chances of that are astronomically low and not worth considering. We also do have here Amp Defense is useful to increase survivability for non-attackers for all game modes. If you roll an Amp Attack, you can also use it for a PvP focused attacker. So that's an example. If you do roll an Amp Defense Core with the Amp Attack substat, then you can give it to a PvP focused attacker unit that you won't consider using in PvE. Next up here, Amp AGL and Amp Crit have the most number of trash stat combinations. They're offensive stats, but they're less impactful than amp attack. So you need to roll at least one amp attack to be worth using on an attacker. Depending on the game mode, of course, you will want to prioritize different stats. For PVE, non-attackers generally want to focus on survivability with priority as follows. So for PVE, you will want to prioritize here for the non-attacker units specifically, HP over amp defense, Amp Defense over AGL, AGL over Defense, Defense over Flat Attack, Flat Attack over the rest. Raw Health does not have diminishing returns, making it useful in most situations than Amp Defense. However, if your childs are at high uncap and spa levels, then you can prioritize having one Amp Attack for more damage. For PvP, non-attackers will also want to focus mostly on survivability but aggressive debuffers and attackers would want to have amp attack as well, putting it above a flat AGL 
etc. Examples here are Banshee, Isolated, Lady Bathory, Billy, and of course there are others. Depending on preference, an attacker core can have a mix of defensive stats and amp attack for PvP, or have fully offensive PvE focused stats while still performing reasonably well in PvP due to the raw damage they output. Now moving on to the Ignition Child recommendations, we do have the top priority for Ignition will be the 5 star attackers. They benefit most from the offensive amp stats and they have significant skill upgrades. Their slide can increase up to a max of 6 total hits. The goal is to have one 6 hit slide attacker of each element. They will be the core of each element for Ragnarok and World Boss. Of course, you would have to select a core with good stats to enable them to reach their full potential. Don't start igniting unless you have a good base core. The list of 6 hit sliders are as follow by elements with a note of their preferred option at equal uncaps. If one attacker has plus two or higher uncap advantage, you can consider igniting them instead if you don't want to wait. So first up here, we do have Fire being Cortis and Bathory, the preferred unit, followed by Sweet Letta and ending off with One Sword Tiamat. For the water units here, we do have Eve, which is preferred. Following Eve, we do have Flower of Justice map that. For the wood units here, we do have Pepita, which is preferred. Ionet, but she is a collaboration exclusive unit, as well as Daphnis here to end off wood. For light type units, we do have Titania, which is the preferred unit. Followed by Titania, we do have Gunslinger Hilder. Now she is a HOR exclusive child, so you would have to pull her from there first. And for the dark type units, we do have Ophoice, which is preferred, followed by Kubaba and ending off with Kefri. All of these units do scale to a 6 hit unit and at full level 12 out of 12 ignition they will have a 6 hit slide but do keep in mind the note here before igniting a 6 hit slider. Now moving on here for those lacking cores there are also 3 star attackers to consider igniting. 3 stars only cost 1 core and 5 3 stars of the same elements compared to the 12 cores needed for 5 star units so a very significant change here for 3 star units although they still cost the same 528,000 onyx to fully ignite they are comparable to plus 6 unignited attackers in terms of damage so a fully ignited 3 hit tap focused attacker can compare to a plus 6 unignited 5 star unit. So these samples here, we do have Fire being Sekhmet, Rune for Water type, we do have Goga, Wood units here, we do have Mech Commander, which we have seen recently in the Nicole World Boss. For Light type here, we do have Boxer, and moving to the Dark type 3 star unit, we do have Legend. Now useful for multiple modes, we do have the following includes childs that are useful in multiple game modes, so a flexible unit that you can ignite here, we do have some examples and will also benefit greatly from ignition, making them high value targets next to the 6 hit slide attackers. So you will of course want to prioritize those 6 hit units we did mention earlier, and then you can focus on the flexible units here that we will discuss right now. So first up here we do have Fispy, can be used across all game modes as a speed buffer, flat gauge fill can stack with all other speed buffs, and thus is very flexible. Next up here we do have Lady Bathory, Dancing Blade becomes 3 targets and gains additional defensive debuff, making her even scarier in PvP while being very useful for world boss as well as and general PvP content such as level 5 plus 3 rebirth lab and she is not used in Ragna. As for world boss, we do have if you want to increase your world boss damage significantly, you can consider partially igniting the following two childs to level 5 which gives them a sizable boost for their slide ability. We do have Sweet Citri and Oracle Werewolf, only level 2 ignition needed if your primary damage is from tap based attackers, specifically for Oracle Werewolf. And we also do have here Thispy, level 5 ignition for turn based slide cooldown reduction minus. She can spread it to most of your team due to her targeting. And moving on to PvP focused units, we do have all childs suggested here require full ignition to unlock their most significant upgrades. So make sure you plan to use them for a long time before you make the commitment. However, ignition does make them much stronger than they would otherwise be and give you an easier time climbing and maintaining PvP ranks. So first up here we do have Nearty, followed by Nearty we do have Fluttering Citri, Lady Bathory, Dreamer Saturn, 
Isolate, and Methuselah. Those are just some examples. Of course, there are some recent debuffers such as the new Nicole that can benefit as well from Ignition. So do keep into account the units that you do see on the Rice Mine tier list as of course you could consider igniting those debuffers as well if they are high tier for PvP. Now to end off the guide here, the Google Docs specifically everyone, we do have an Ignition Core tier list here of course that you do want to prioritize from God and of course if you have nothing better. So this is a tier list as you can see tier 0, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, etc. So first up here we do have attackers without percentage skills. So these are units that don't have percentage based kits here in their slide skill and of course we do have the ignition core recommendations for attackers that do have percentage skills in their kits so you guys can feel free to check out this guide here on the google doc that i did put together of course all of the information was gathered from the destiny child international discord server so if you guys would like to join the links are here on the google doc and of course we do have additional information with the destiny child global database that is very helpful for a newer player and we also do have oxytocin's world boss lab which you can find recommendations of world boss units that you should ignite for all elements specific elements etc so before we do dive into the rice mine i did want to check out oxytocin's world boss lab of what you can expect to check out here so of course we do have the attacker priority for water the attacker priority for wood units etc of course all elements they are very helpful with the information here so i highly suggest checking out oxytocin's google doc here we also do have the ignition priority for attackers here with images we also do have the staple world boss units here and the specific ignition level and of course their changes when they do reach the ignition level noted here so a ton of information here we also do have oxytocin's ignition core guide that i did mention earlier on in the google doc i put together we do have the top tier equips the top tier soul carta that you will want to apply to your world boss units so all of this information can be found on their world boss guide this is a ton of info for the world boss event of course they are one of the game leaders here for the world boss trial side of the game so definitely take into consideration their knowledge as they are very very wise with the world boss knowledge of theirs now before we do end off this video everyone i did want to check out the rice mine tier list a little bit and of course introduce it to you all that may not know about it we do have all of the childs listed here in tiers they do update it frequently and of course with any new child release i do dive into their information here on the channel so with the more recent childs you won't have to worry as of course i do rate them here on the channel as well but for example let's say you do have a unit such as two-sided moa and let's say you do like her looks but you're not sure if she is a good unit skill wise so you could always just type in moa here on the rice mine tier list for example and check her out here now unfortunately as you can see by the ratings which do scale up to 10 she isn't a good unit at all now she does look cool but overall investment wise she isn't a good unit so that's just an example of units and information here you can find in the tier list you could also find the tiers here for pvp units all you have to do is click tiers here sort by the mode here for example pvp we do have the tier 10 units here and of course it goes all the way down here to tier 3 being two-sided moa so you would obviously not want to invest in the units that are under tier 8 i would say as they may be worthless to invest in for pvp but for example here we do have overtaker titania which does scale very well for ragnar break and world boss so we do check her out here and she is tier 9 in raid and tier 8 in world boss so do take into account the modes here you can sort them by raid for of course ragnar break world boss here and of course pve if you are looking for helpful units to help in the rebirth lab story mode etc you can build your team accordingly here based on the ratings here on rice mine japan and of course if you do have any questions about your teams you could always leave them in the comment section below or join my youtube community server linked in the description as well but that'll pretty much do it for today's destiny child video here everyone of course make sure to let me know if you guys did learn something from the ignition portion of this video as of course i'm trying to toss out some information on the ignition side of the game here on the channel as of course it may be a very daunting aspect of destiny child for a newer player 
and some veterans may not be informed about it as well if you are returning to the game etc so if you guys did learn something or enjoyed the guide please make sure to let me know in the comment section below and of course leave a like on this video as well as make sure to check out the links in the description box below to the destiny child international discord server as of course all of this info wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them so a huge thank you to the members of the dci discord and of course to oxytocin a ton of thanks to oxytocin as well for creating that amazing world boss lab guide as of course it does help us all with prioritizing units specifically for the world boss event the core tier list and of course more so if you guys are interested once again the dci discord will be linked in the description box below and of course all of the google docs here we did overview in today's video but before you go everyone make sure to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy today's ignition guide here on the channel and of course make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already also make sure to check out the links in the description box below to the memberships tab if you guys would like to support the channel above and beyond with the subscription here to the channel we do have tons of perks so make sure to check out channel memberships in the description if you're interested but with all of that being said i'll see you all in the next destiny child video as always thank you all so much for watching